ça. Right. Um, it's been a long day and a lot of you are, I'm quite sure, waiting to you know, wind up things and go. So I'll try to make it as quickly as possible. Uh, many of those things, many of the problems that you heard regarding individual water metering uh, have already been shared by uh, Jacob just now and in many of the sessions earlier in the thing. Um, so I'll, I'll just sort of quickly take you through some of the stuff. This is a famous quote by Butros Butros Gali. And it's beginning to happen. It's beginning. You can see that uh, you know in the recent wars, uh, you know Syria and other stuff, people have cut off drinking water, so on and so forth. This is how it's expected to grow. We are going to have problems, and and there's no point. I can keep saying we're going to have problems. We're going to have problems. There are graphics. Now, when it comes to apartments, we know that you know uh, you the, the the fee charge is either on a fixed fee or on square foot and things and so on and so forth. As one of our very prospective and very respected customers uh, had once said, square feet do not consume water, people do. Uh, this was very encouraging for us. Uh, we came up with the idea of how to do this individual apartment metering, which would help in two ways. One way is to ensure that you, know, you have this overall reduction in the total water consumption. Second is to ensure that people pay per use. So, uh, what do we do? Fundamentally, you can't control what you don't measure. And right now, what's happening is we don't measure. Leaving aside the few, some few cases of uh, people like uh, Jacob said and a few other apartments, most apartments don't measure individual consumption. And the reason is very clear. Uh, as, uh, as has been say, as said earlier also, why is it tough? to adopt water meters in apartment complexes. It's plumbing, 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 plumbing. The way it's made is that you have apartments, you have multiple entry points. How do you fix meters there? You need to put multiple meters. If you put multiple meters, where do you go to read them? How, how do you collect all these readings? And if you don't want to do this, then you do a replumbing. You replumb. <coughs> And then you have all this additional plumbing which comes in multiple points as was in the photograph earlier. You have a lot more plumbing to do, a lot more meters to read, a lot more transactions to happen in order to take these things. And you need somebody to go there every month to take down those readings, put them together and come. So, of course, it's not feasible in, in certain cases. We come across places where the ducts are so narrow that you must get the thinnest possible Spider-Man to get in and climb, okay? And in, in manpower is needed, it is expensive, replumbing costs sometimes very difficult. Imagine replumbing for 20 apartments or 19-story apartments, it's not going to happen. It's going to be extremely difficult. No control because there is no real-time monitoring. There is no real-time monitoring of water consumption. There is no information available to people genuinely wanting to control. Like he was saying earlier, Everybody believes that I don't consume, he consumes. I don't consume, there are five people living in that apartment. These are things that we have come across, we have, we have seen people having these things. But do you really know that you, you, you are the one who are consuming more or less? Do you really, are you the one who are actually consuming more or less? That's not really known and you can't do it until you measure. Meters, we've had traditional meters, single jet meters as they were called, multiple jet meters as they were called earlier. We've had uh, wireless meters of some sorts wherein you go every time and take the reading wirelessly and then come away. And now we've got this internet connected automatic water monitoring system. I will tell you more about it as we go on. Fundamentally, uh, we have a meter which is a self-powered wireless smart meter. Now, when I say self-powered, what it means is that it generates the power required for it to measure and to transmit the data from the water flow. There's a small turbine inside which generates enough power for it to do the wireless activity by itself. So it, it is completely self-sufficient. It doesn't need to do anything else. The second aspect is that as against many of the single jet meters which you would see installed horizontally and uh, you know which needs a chamber and which you need to go in to do all these things, these are what are called as positive displacement type meters. They can be installed in any angle and what we do is we would put them into the inlet at the ducts. 
in an inaccessible area where you don't have to go and take the readings. You simply don't have to go. For cases where people are skeptical about it, they do have an opening. You can have a mechanical readout. You can see the actual physical readout also. But all these meters, they measure the water flow and at the end of a water consumption, they transmit the data to our nucleus. The nucleus is sort of kept either in the maintenance office or in your uh, any convenient place, uh, security chamber if, if it's so required. Wherever it is that would be convenient, this, this device is kept. All the meters in the complex send their data wirelessly to this. They don't depend on your internet connectivity or your wireless connectivity. They establish their own secure network within themselves in order to do this. And this guy then sends the information to our website, uh, to our server. And you can have access to that through a dashboard. So that is a dashboard which is available for uh, maintenance officers to look at what is the amount of water flow, what has been happening, daily consumption, bill collection, uh, what you can, it will help you to sort of plan as to see how much water you might need or what is your planning, etc, etc. It also helps you keep track of payments and other stuff. It also helps you set the tariff. Uh, there was the, the Excel sheet which was shown earlier was talking about a slab rate wherein you can, you know, uh, increase the cost of water for every slab. That can be very easily managed within this. You can set the slab rates, you can decide on how you want to charge uh, your residents for the water. The other important thing which is having interesting thing is these guys have a wall within themselves. So it is possible for you to remotely shut off a wall. You don't have to walk down and knock on the door of somebody at 12 o'clock in the night and take abuse. You could shut it out yourself and then open it out the next morning. The resident himself will get an alert. For example, if somebody left a tap open and went away and then water comes in it and you find there is a leak, they, can, they are configured to raise an alert so that you can get an alert saying, look, water has been flowing for you know 25 minutes when it is not expected to flow. And then you have an ability either on your mobile or on your uh, login screen you know, to go and shut down that valve. Bear in mind, it's not a tap which gets closed down, it's the wall, the entire wall to the input, which you can then subsequently open. You close the tap and then you can open it later on. Uh, all this stuff will happen absolutely without any manual intervention. It's uh, designed and implemented in a way that you don't have to go there to take a meter reading. It gets the readings onto itself and the bills are emailed to every resident on a monthly basis. So you get, uh, the association will sort of decide the if you say that on the 8th of every month I want a bill, then we can go ahead and give you the bill for every resident on the 8th of the month. Fundamentally, we are looking at measuring, monitoring, and controlling. As it happens, the very fact that you start measuring and monitoring will start bringing in some sort of savings. That's what uh, Jacob was also saying earlier, showing very graphically how the graph sort of drastically fell down. When you implement, if the studies show that anywhere from 20 to 30 percent savings is there overall when you start metering. That's because the consciousness starts coming in, saying that, okay, this is being metered, so therefore I must start looking at it. In our own apartments, we had this uh, funny situation saying that uh, before we implemented individual water uh, metering, everyone thought we were using less. The first month, there was no change, absolutely no change, because everybody thought they're still using less. But when the first bill came, that's when the thing started saying, am I using this much? Is the meter faulty? All these things happen. But the second and subsequent months onwards, the reduction we were able to see and then it sustained for a longer time. Um, some more details about our meter. They are accurate, class B. Uh, they conform to IS standards. Uh, they've been tested, um, guaranteed life of about eight years. Uh, we have flow control, so you can remotely control the flow. They are self-powered, uh, so they generate their own power, they, are, they, they don't have to depend on anything else, there is not no cabling or anything involved. We can fix them right outside the, each inlet in the duct. Um, they are robust, the cloud based architecture is absolutely not a problem at all. The other important thing is they have self-diagnostics. Because it's a connected thing, what happens is these meters can diagnose themselves and alert us in case something is going wrong. We in fact check every every day once whether a meter is alive, active or not active. It gives you a 24 hour time by the time we can react and go and set things right. 
this is the nucleus the nucleus is the central part this this is the one which gets connected to our server again it works on different technologies it has a sim card which is through which it talks to our server this can also be remotely controlled remotely it, it works on uh, remote technology so that we can diagnose these things check that it's all working there is no issues with respect to you know finding at the end of the month that something worked or didn't work um, analytics alerts intelligent features tariff management this is a typical bill that you will get one of the things that we've included in the bill is a comparison of where you are with your average of your neighbors it gives a sort of a fillip saying that okay i am better than them i am worse than them is there scope for my improvement how are you with respect to the rest of the people all the people that we have in our database how good how bad then of course if you have 3 meters what are your opening reading closing reading what is your consumption what is the tariff that was used and therefore what is the money that you have to pay a graph of your past 6 months performance and some recognition for the lowest uh consumer uh, in your apartment some recognition kind of stuff will come in into this of course we make it we sure we are sure that we don't use uh, zero because if a com apartment is not used he, the same apartment would come up here so there's a cut off value below which uh, this these recognitions would come so fundamentally the whole system of water metering is going uh, into a connected sort of a, a world and with the wall being in place you have other features also like for example um, when you have disruptions people store the water and then they throw the water so it's in the it's it actually works in the reverse of actual consumption with the wall you can you can program this configure this to say an apartment will get x liters of water a day no matter what time they consume no matter which bathroom they consume so then there is no the, the reason for storing water is a threat that if you know it doesn't come back what do i do you remove that threat by saying that this much water for you is sort of guaranteed and then you don't have any issues with respect to that people can keep the, the, there is no need for store, storing the water and then wasting it subsequently it is also possible for uh, you know some uh, associations if it is it's a little bit of a bold step but it is also possible for associations to go into a completely prepaid water more because you have the wall it it's some it's it's a concept which you can uh, implement there are people actively thinking about it so that you don't have the issue of uh, you know um, payment collection at least towards this water subsequently going on it's it's very prevalent in gurgaon for uh, power uh, water is just about coming in now but it's very easily implementable through this so you don't bother about anything else though of course you have to ensure that you know uh, water is available on demand so these are some of the advantages that you will have uh, with respect to having a wall in place that is you can also design like there are four people apartment you decide okay they'll consume 600 and automatically the wall will shut off is that what you're saying we can automatically shut off now whether it is at 600 or whether it is 800 is an association and residents prerogative that is possible as well that is possible we fill the overhead tanks to the extent fullest maximum yes and, i mean give 600 liters for each flat and say after yes. literally you will get you will get i mean rationing rationing you you can ration that so that when they consume 600 liters in a day all three assuming that there are three inlets to the thing all three of them will cut off so what happens each user they get an alert first so what you are about to consume yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not like you know you are uh, having a shower and then your water gets cut off <laughs> <laughs> so you have enough warnings <laughs> i don't have any more slides okay so there are three variants uh, that we have um, there is one variant which has which is without the wall which is about 5500 includes uh, the supply includes uh, fixing and includes uh, a two year uh, warranty period with every month bills by email uh, the one with the wall is 6500 and uh, the one with the self charging okay these two variants actually uh, you would have seen in almost all the multi rise apartments all the piping is on a duct right so we do the self powering of this through solar and we daisy chain them Uh, the ones with the independent uh, turbine based charging are more towards villas and uh, individual houses those are priced at 8500
per meter is per so meter this is per meter so per, 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 three three meters are required in the apartment to be done it would be three times that it would be three times, it will be three times that this so is installation yes, this includes installation i have a small proviso there sir we have come across apartments where it is impossible to get in and do anything at all and we have come across apartments where a, a, a little bit extra effort might be required in terms of scaffolding if the original builder has not provided ample uh, safety measures in order to do this in such cases there may be an addition of scaffolding cost which we can do in our preliminary survey how much of plumbing does it call for Uh, it calls for very little re-plumbing. We don't have to plumb uh, or redo the piping at all. Uh, in in the first before metering photo that Jacob showed, you would have seen that there is a header which is coming down, and there are tappings taken into each apartment. So we just need to replace this tapping with a couple of pipes and a meter in place. So this is uh, per inlet that you per inlet. So if you have four inlets, then you need four meters. Yes, typical two or three BHK. We have come across places where bathrooms are close to each other, so two bathrooms can be combined into one meter. We, it depends upon like like one of the points that Jacob said. For your recycled water, which is already you have accounted for, you may not actually want to put a meter at all. Meter at all. Uh, true, but even meter. otherwise, many apartments come with three or four inlets. What about the kitchen? Yes. Uh, but I have a question with respect to your. Just one second. I'll just come one by one, but uh, we can also have questions for James Jacob. We can combine all the meeting questions now. So I'll just come one by one with the mic. You hello. Yes. So we also have a demo of this. Uh, so when we have team. You said the life uh, time for or the life for the device is eight years. That's. And you said you give a warranty of two years. Yes. What happens after two years and? what is it after 2 years you have many choices there is obviously an amc which you can go into there is also an option wherein fundamentally you need services for billing which will be something like 10 rupees per bill and that there is not nothing else beyond that there is a third option where you say that you don't want to depend on us at all you want to do everything yourself then there is a small one time software which will give which we can give you through that You through the nucleus that we have, you can extract the information and prepare your bills yourself. Okay. All three options are available. But the AMC would still be required, right? We can't avoid the AMC, right? If I have to have it, not the device. No, not necessarily. As, as typically, if you buy a water filter and if you don't do an AMC, what happens per visit? In case something goes wrong, based on what has gone wrong, there might be some fee that you will have to pay. That's about it. Okay. What will be the AMC fees? Uh, the AMC, including the hardware replacement, everything is seven percent of the installed. Seven percent of the meter cost. Okay, uh, two yes. I actually have a quote from uh, Act Energy. Okay. High water meter solutions. I wanted to discuss that. Probably I'll take it later. Sure. We'll be glad to. We can have some discussions outside when we are actually seeing the demo. Two question actually. Uh, generally, the plumbing is uh, GI pipe. Yes. So what happened? It rusted, and then all that things come down on the meter. Yes. So how do you avoid choking the meters? Uh, yes. Here? And the second question is, uh, uh, this technology used here, how easily it is available in the market? Uh, so that after two, three years, uh, is there any other uh, standard way where you can uh, basically go and get it replaced? Okay. So the first question, uh, GI pipes. Uh, what happens if uh, there are particles in the thing? Ideally, the particles in the thing, which are we, uh, like Jacob was saying, you can filter them at the outlet, so you are sure that not too much goes in. But the more important thing is the meters, the physical meters that we have are positive displacement as against a jet pipe. A jet pipe usually has a nozzle through which you have things go and they clog in there. Positive displacement meters have the advantage that they are not they are not affected by dust. They push the dust through as it comes. There is a rotating thing, but there is no nozzle. There is no nozzle. To answer your second question, what is this existing technology? Is it replaceable? You need to know. I need to know what it is that is worrying you to be replaced. Can you replace this water meter? Of course you can. You can put another water meter and do it. Can you replace the uh, billing part? Yes, you can replace the billing part. But what is what is it that worries you? The fundamental thing is: is the meter accurate? Are you getting your bills on time? for doing these two things whatever it is that you need to do is definitely available there is nothing proprietary in this 
do, we do what the design does. The design is ours. We are getting it contract manufactured. The design is ours, but there is nothing which is proprietary in the technology. And for, for anything which is proprietary, we are giving you alternatives by means of the software, so you can continue to take that out anywhere. The Zigbee technology which is used is predominantly the technology which is be, being used for all smarter homes, smart homes, uh, home appliances kind of stuff. That's the technology which has been identified worldwide for home automation and that is going to be used. So it's mainly coming from the sensors, whatever is there right inside the meter, it goes bad or the electronics goes bad and we need replacement and then uh, this is a long term thing, like 8 years, 10 years kind of thing we are talking about. See, so, so, so uh, I, I understand your concern. I am, I would be very happy to say that we are going to be around for a long, long time, but, but, but if there is nothing to prevent you from going somewhere else and getting on, it's not, we don't hold a uh, patent or proprietary kind of thing. There are patents which are pending on this for other reasons, not for components. Do you guarantee 100% accuracy? Accuracy is class B accuracy, which is plus minus 2%. It's as per higher standards. Okay, one question. Hard water? Hello? Yeah, sorry. One, one second. His, his question was on hard water. Um, so, one of the things which the modern uh, newer technologies has enabled is in material sciences, sir. So, some of the, uh, the, the engineering plastics used in this are with low surface tension, so they desilate uh, the calcium deposition. Having said that, it, it depends upon how much, how bad the quality of water or how hard the water is going to be, which is going to have an impact. But as compared, as compared to a metallic, metal, uh, brass or a gunmetal kind of a thing, this will be much, much better. Yeah, the question that I was trying to ask is, the self diagnosis. Self -diagnosis. No, you don't have to go and do anything in the meter. The self diagnostics will take care and say that if it's functioning or not functioning. About hard water deposits. About hard water deposits, I'm including in the statement saying that you don't have to go to the meter to do any cleaning. If your worry is that there is too much, or the water is very hard and so it is going to spoil the meter or change its accuracy, I am I'm saying that please allay those fears, this does not get affected by that. That's, that's the thing. What about sand, sand in the pipeline? Yeah, there are a lot of particles in the hard water that we use. No? Yeah, so the, I, the question is beyond a certain point everything will get affected. If there is going to be a lot of sand particles and other things which you use, the more ideal thing is, is to put a filter on, on the down corner in the header and clean it on a regular basis rather than try to go and do something about the meter. Okay, what is, apart from the meter cost, that 5,500 or 6,000, you are using the SIM card and all on the nucleus you are saying. Is there any running cost for the association apart from the meter cost? No, that, that's what I am saying. So for the first two years there is no other running costs. In this cost is included the installation and two years of monthly billing to every resident by email, not paper paper bills, email bills. Have you implemented this anywhere, any department uh, you have to? We came into the market in, in uh, March after about a year of working on it. We are just about implementing our first thing. Our pilots in our own houses and apartments have been running for almost a year now. But we are going into a first commercial Im implementation in, in the next month or so. After two years, Where? what will be the price of this charges? Where? Come down. Uh, so after two years, sir, for each bill, the charge is 10 rupees per bill. And, and you also have the option, if you don't want to do that, you could take a software from us, from our nucleus, you could extract your bill yourself and then continue. It is not very expensive, sir. It might be around a couple of lakhs or so. It's not going to be expensive. Okay, I, I think we are running out of time. We can have the questions more when he is a, there is a demo of the meter there. One okay. question to Jacob. Jacob, one question, right? You have those meters, right? Uh, Jumbal, if I'm yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, how reliable is it? I want to know, okay, is there any maintenance on those meters to be done? We started our operation in, uh, the meter was installed in uh, starting from September. And so far, no complaints. 
Yeah, it's a normal filter. Yeah, it's a normal filter. I just wonder because you have a filter at the also. Those precautions we have taken. Yeah. Primarily we have got that filter what is part of the softener. Okay. That is a three stage filter. So the water what is going up is passing through that. It's right? already filtered. Yeah. And then the, the down pipe that is already having one wise trainer and another wise trainer before the ending that chamber. Okay. 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 Ok
uh, attraction this time e even more than the last workshop. So I think it will be cool if we can, out of this there are more success stories that emerge and uh, you know, I think next water workshops we'll, we can make it, maybe make it a two day workshop or something. Yeah. Thanks, Meera. So here, uh, today what happened is that we could bring all these together. Uh, please don't go. I just have something about you also, Kasturi. Just, just a minute. So uh, you, you had media, media as well as software company coming together because both of us have something to contribute. Now, Meera has said what she can contribute is probably, you know, now take all these learnings and go to builders, go to government and saying that, you know, what can be done. What we can do as a software company is that, see, what I saw is that you all shot down the moment he said that, you know, two lakhs, right? But just think about it. You're actually putting in a lot of money any which ways, right? How would innovation happen, you know, if we just say, hey, come on, forget about it. Even, don't even think about it. I mean, you are the influencers here. You're the management company members, members, right? And here is a team who's actually trying to do a hard solution. You look at startups. They're all busy building the next Flipkart or the next whatever else, right? Real estate property listing. And here's somebody who's trying the hard solution because here we have Brigade Gateway and Ellen here has been participating in every water workshop. But she hasn't been able to do what Samhita Square could do, water metering, because hers is an 800 apartment? 1200. 1200 apartment complex. They can't do water metering the way they have done, right? It's absolutely impossible. So that is where solutions like these are needed. It, it cannot be done away with. So, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so one of the things that I should add, one of, one of the things that I should add is. That 2 lakhs came out as a figure, but let's look at what it actually meant. It meant that what are the options that are possible if you don't want a service of billing at all? It's not that 2 lakhs is a figure at all. Nothing it's like, charge to like they don't need to be with the partner at all, so we'll take care of all that. Right. <laughs> so, You, you, you don't, no, so first of all you don't need to buy the software at all, you don't have a handheld at all, you have the nucleus which is fixed in your maintenance office which will actually collect the readings and send it to us. It's, it's a different thing, I understand that from I, I meter or uh, other handheld related solutions you will have that. They are also wireless but you need a handheld device in that case, in our case there is no handheld, absolutely nothing that is required. Yes. And because of the uh, multi-part distortions, what we have yes. in any typical apartment, yes. uh, the nucleus device would yes. need to be proper, probably might have to have multiple devices sitting into yes. the complete campus. Yes. This is true with respect to Zigbee when you don't have line of sight, when you have a lot of concrete walls in the middle. But in our implementation, what happens is the Zigbee transmission happens at the top of your duct on which all the meters exist. So there is a clear line of vision, even if there is a sort of any other small things, it is not very interfering, interfering with respect to that. And in our typical implementation, when we do the implementation, if there is a blind spot, we will fix a small repeater there, which will ensure that you will also get it. Uh, our, our range, our line of sight between two Zigbees, if you are interested, has been tested up to 900 feet without absolutely any problems in any weather. Now, typically if you see the range from the bottommost up to a 19th floor building, it's not more than 200 feet. So there is absolutely no problems with respect to this. Do we need to pay for the nuclear devices as well? No, no. And all the repeaters are the No. All that's uh, supplied case, by us. And in case of installation, there is a separate piping that needs to be done. No, no separate piping would require to be done. If your duct has been constructed normally with enough uh, access way for people to go in and work there in a safe manner, the, the, the installation charges are included in this. We have come across places where it's very difficult to work on, but the implementation would need a scaffolding. Those cases, the scaffolding cost may come, but we can decide when we do a small so survey. I may add something over here. Right. So our first implementation, which we are going to start now, it's a very complicated uh, apartment complex. It's right behind Cunningham Road. Um, uh, 4,800 4, square feet penthouses, duplex apartments. Five bathrooms, one kitchen, one servant quarter, one utility area. There are 16 to 18 inlets coming into each house. Right? <laughs> and then there are ducts which are right inside the building, which you can't access. 
there is no way you can access the guy who designed it, it was like, you know, Basha Akbar, uh, means whatever he did to the Nur Jahan and all that, right? So it is designed like that. So there is no way you can access those plumbing lines at all. So they have been thinking and they have been, you know, very proactive about it. And they themselves offered to uh, have a relook at the entire plumbing and they wanted to make sure that they do bear the cost and all that. But somehow we have found a better solution which does not require too much plumbing and it just cuts into a small hole, we go and access the piping and install a meter. So this is the kind of solution that we are, and it's one of the trickiest and perhaps we are lucky or we say we delayed a lot, but that's what it is. So, what I suggest is that there's a live demo of the meter outside, so please don't get So, uh, uh, two things, please check out the uh, demo. There are uh, Citizen Matter books out there, very useful, uh, authored by Citizen Matters about Bangalore, buying property, uh, living in Bangalore and all that. So, please uh, get some of them for you and your friends. And there's also a uh, uh, high tea that's there. Before that, I'd invite the organizing team, please come to the stage, because without them, you know, this event wouldn't be possible at all. Uh, we know Mahalingam. Oh, that's okay. We'll do it on stage. Please come, come to the stage. Meera, please come. So that's Ashika, our CEO, uh, Kavya, um, uh, KK, and uh, Nilima, and uh, we have Vinod. So uh, Vinod here is creating a certification program for estate managers. So, Apartment Data very soon is launching a certification program where you can send your uh, estate managers. We not only teach them software, but about these best practices, how an STP operates, all about the elevator, everything. So, he's getting that together. And Munmun. -mun and what is, the, what is the duration of that program? Uh, so, we have three courses on that. One is on the engineering aspects. That's going to be two weeks. One is going to be managerial aspects, vendor management, people management, and things like that. So, you can get a fresh off the college guy also and we'll make him an estate manager. So that's going to be another like one week. And there's a starting up an association. What are the things that are needed? Handover documents from the builder, BWSSB, PCB uh, compliances, and all these kind of things. The simple thing that you know every association office should have a key box, you know, that all the important keys should be there and all that stuff. So he's putting a curriculum like that together, and we'll soon roll it out. So. Very good. Can you send us those uh, details? We will, sir. No, no, sir. We are yet to launch it. So <laughs> we'll do that. The introduction to all these concepts is there in the living in Bangalore. <laughs> so, yeah, so please give a big hand to the organizing team. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks to all of you for coming. Thank you. Yeah.